What's going on everybody, it's Tom and it's Jamie. Welcome to the Chronicles of Podcast. The Chronicles of Bloodstock 2024. Uh, I'm Ollie. And I'm Danny. We're from Reverend Son. Oh, I love it. How's your personal Friday treating you boys? Oh, it's very nice here. It's wonderful. Oh, I'm having the time of my life. My feet really hurt, but I'm having the time of my How life. How come? I did a lot of walking yesterday back and forth from the car. <laughs> ah. And these are brand new docks. I didn't think this through. Oh, <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> yeah. oh no. <laughs> Rookie error. How far did you have to go as well? Um, I'm parked up in the normal car park and then to the artist and then back to Dude, why is parking the artist camp? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I fancy a challenge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh no, they only let one car. No, no I've had to park there. Oh, so you've. Yeah. Okay, oh, I see. <laughs> so you're going to draw a walk. <laughs> We're going to draw short stores. He's going to park further us away. I only took the essentials one pair of pants, a tent, and a 10 pack of Budweiser. That was it. That's all that's in my tent. <laughs> Absolutely phenomenal. Um, you've played a raid today, haven't you? Yes. yes. How was it? Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah? Absolutely ram pack, sharks flying, just as we anticipated. Brilliant. I love, I love, the thing I love about Bloodstock as well is the fact that you think we're on quite early don't think anyone's going to really show because obviously still, people might be hungover so, but the thing about Bloodstock is the whole family feel of the festival is no matter how hungover or tired people are they will still go and fuck music yeah. to go and see that, fucking music if they music. feel a kick drum in them like, oh where's that coming from yeah, yeah where is that <laughs> where, where, where? they're smelling it don't they might be a heart attack <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> love it I can smell a snare <laughs> yeah. China yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Compared to a Reverend Sun show, to a Reverend Sun festival set, do you change sets up accordingly if people might be so familiar with yourselves? So say you want to drop all the bangs in? Yeah, I mean, depending on what the venue is, we do have a lot heavier songs than what everyone heard today. Okay. But yeah, depending on what the venue is, we go, yeah, we're going to do that one. We're going to make you put your pants a little bit. Yeah. That would be nice to this place because there's a nice little lady over there, so we're going to... Be sensible around her. It's what we got in the bag as well. We have a geezer dress up like a cyclops, a geezer dress up like a space wizard. Obviously, we've got the inflatable sharks, which... You can't exactly throw that around in a pub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> we did once and it didn't go well. We oh, didn't go, oh, it was actually globes. We ran out of sharks. So I, I don't know what the thought process was. We'll get inflatable globes. You start kicking something that's circle and inflatable into a crowd, it don't end well. Especially if it hits an older lady's face. Like is, that it, what, is that what we're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Oh, shit. My bad. I'm very sorry. It was more awkward because it was during tuning and he just punted it and she's just standing right there. <laughs> <laughs> so the room was dead quiet as well. It's exactly like that bit from the in-betweeners where he throws the frisbee. It was a, but with an inflatable globe. So the globe is no longer on the menu. No. Yeah, no yeah. Was it one of those moments where you like... You did it, and then just went and sat packing up again. Like, which, which girl? Like, <laughs> oh, the funny thing is, I got the blame. Ross did it ten seconds later to the same person. No, oh, yeah. no. And, and, and no one cared. For me, no, I'm not being a victim of that. But, yeah, yeah, because at one of the places we played, it's got it's got a post in the middle of the stage. So of course he's punted it right in her face. It's come back. Ross has punted it, hit the post, and ricocheted back into her. Because well, I was the drummer at the time. I'm sitting at the back. Just thinking, oh, I'm glad I'm back here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one time I actually want to be ignored is now. Yeah. <laughs> You're like the final boss. <laughs> <laughs> Not getting past me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where throws his drumsticks out, just smacks her <laughs> on the face. Or <laughs> this next song's dedicated to that lady. We're really sorry. You know, it's not stabbing your shirt and you're pinned against the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, guys, also, as a podcast, we are ambassadors for the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. Are you familiar with Sophie and her story? I'm not, are you? Not, not very clued up, I'm afraid. So basically, back in 2007, Sophie and her boyfriend were walking through a park on a night out, and they were attacked by a gang of youths, and they unfortunately lost their lives. Well, yeah, Sophie lost her is. life, sorry. Yeah. Her boyfriend, Rob, was also in a coma, but fortunately, he survived. Um, basically, this all happened because they were goths. Yeah. Because of the way they were dressed, that was literally it. They were just coming home from a night out. They didn't know these people. That was the only reason they were attacked. So the whole point of the foundation which was just started by her mum was to raise awareness and support for people in this alternative community to try and stop this from happening, us being treated differently and get it classed as a hate crime yeah. like it should be. Yeah. So as we're talking to bands this weekend, we're basically asking, does being alternative affect your life still to this day? Do you ever like, go to work, go to the doctors and you're treated differently, given a funny look? Whatever it might be, just because, say, you've got long hair or tattoos, whatever it may be very much so there's always that like playground obviously bullying kids as well but um it's also like 
quite a sad thing see being like fetishized they're fetished like um a lot of the alternative girls like they let them live their lives like let them yeah. be their selves they're not a sexual object they're just being their selves but it is sad especially what happened with sophie and her boyfriend um and it's we need to make a change like everyone's entitled to live their life exactly how they want why should there be hate but day by day step by step i mean the main thing is you know wear what you want do you what do what you want if you're not doing any harm to anyone then what's it matter exactly exactly which is why it baffles me that that isn't the case in the world to be honest no but obviously when that happened to sophie that was 2007 when we were all growing up now compared to 2024 is a very different world yeah um do you think it's probably easier now to grow up as part of this this community or still challenges out there do you reckon Oh, it's a hard one to say. There's always going to be challenges. Um, I think it's better than it was. I think social media is obviously blown up. You see TikTok and there's a lot of trends where metal music's coming through, like Sleep Token and Bad Omens have done really, really well. And I think it's ushered in people who never liked metal and heavy metal before coming in. And if you look back at the school, Everyone had that Linkin Park album with Jay Z. Oh god! That was how we like met in the middle of the alternatives and like the normal folk. But it's a challenge. There's always going to be one bad egg amongst a lot of good people. I think social media made people more aware of the communities as well. Because 2007, it's not really a thing. I mean, you'd had early Facebook, but these people are still around. Oh, yeah. It's just now with social media, it's it's instant. Everyone's more aware of it. Yeah, absolutely. I think mean, social media is that double-edged sword because, like, you can find your family on there, but you can also open yourself up to a lot of issues. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you're here because you won Matter to the Masses in Essex. Absolutely. How was that? How did that feel? Oh, that was... That was a good night. Yeah. That was a good night. Yeah, really good. One, because every, every band that entered Metal to the Masses could have won and because the talent out there absolutely incredible like I was standing with Ross and I was just like mate we did really really well because I thought because we didn't win it and then they said our name and it was just like pinch me I feel like I'm dreaming I don't think I'm here and like it didn't really kick in until we got on that stage and I'm thinking oh my god this is happening I'm on here there's already sharks in the crowd yeah yeah (laughs) good man (laughs) it's one of those moments where your name got out congratulations to them wait hang on (laughs) I am them (laughs) Jesus! <laughs> yeah. and you haven't released music for the last couple of years either, we've noticed. So is there anything on the way? Anything we can talk yeah. about? Yeah, we've got we've got an album coming out this year. Hopefully, probably October, November time. Nice. We've been in the studio for the past year now, getting all the instruments down with. Yeah. Next step is just uh, the singer. Yeah. Hopefully we can bring you some uh, new music this year. Yeah. Phenomenal. Gents, this has been an absolute blast. Thank you so much for taking the time out to chat with us. Thank today. you very much. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you, lads. We're going to the next Thank you. Wonderful. Have a lovely rest of your day and weekend. Thank you, guys. Thank you.